All right, folks, I want to ex explain why I left the EAS community. So first of all, the community is really toxic. That's the most people say. It's just a niche community with not a lot of good people. Like, who would have thought that there would have been so many predators? Like people like RMWX or Clay Ranger 143 or even yes, EAS Alert 88. Like the predatory activities that they've done, I do not condone them. And that is absolutely terrible. Hearing that, it turns out that they're predators. It's like really disappointing. It's terrible. And there's just like a lot of people that are just annoying within the community that are just obnoxious, like screaming over EAS stuff. And just being like super screaming over, like, I don't know why Michael Clay Ranger 143 was screaming over Davidson. Why? Why? Why was he screaming over that? I don't get it. And some people just went along with it. I went along with it too, but I never really understood why Davidson. Like, there's just certain weird behaviors, and it all roots from the top. Like, the EAS community, like, monkey see, monkey do. Like, that's basically what I'm saying. A lot of the bigger creators are setting a terrible example. And I'm going to point fingers. I'm not afraid to do that. Like, SPC Cranford 1056. The way he screamed, like, holy crap, another one. Or, like, being all like that. Like, flash flood warning for my county. It all stems from the top. It all stems from the top. People look up to you, and your audience is a reflection of you, of you. I will say that. Your own audience is a reflection of you as a person. Whatever says, they will go along with it. They won't know any better, especially kids, especially minors. Sure, adults might, like, have the maturity... For that and that's just something that like a lot of young people like under the age of 18 are into this sort of stuff the my next reason for leaving the EAS community is I wanted to branch out I want it more I want it to be like because I feel like when I was doing like a lot of EAS stuff a lot of new viewers that, that are not a part of the community were probably confused like, I've seen this. A lot of people were confused. Like, some people that I worked with were just confused. Like, what is this EAS stuff? So, people outside of the community are just going to be confused on what the hell is a Davidson or whatnot. Like, they're going to be, like, really... I want it to be like more accessible. I want it to have a bit more of a mainstream audience. I want it to like change a lot with my content because it's like FFW. They won't know what you're talking about when you say FFW or CRP or whatever. They won't know what you're talking about or CAE. They, they won't really understand why you're screaming over an alert. Let's be honest. Normal people won't understand. This is like, this is like, this goes hand in hand with like the previous reason. I want it to be a bit more accessible and I want it a bit more accessibility. It's with my content to get out of the niche and become like more mainstream. I just feel like a lot of people are just like, what was I going to say? I just feel like a lot of people won't really understand like EAS and stuff, especially in other parts of the world. Like most of my audience is from the United States, so that's where the EAS system is used. That's where it's used. So the EAS stuff is like you see it on TV and it's really good. I would say, like, because of this EAS community, guys, the EAS community is in an echo chamber. They are in an echo chamber. 
believe it or not. They just, what's easily understood, like, I've gotten into that echo chamber and I finally come out. This wasn't like a process that just happened like right now. This was gradual. Like I can, it all started with like the rebrand to Gateway Star. That's when I started leaving the EAS community back in like 2022. I started transitioning away from the EAS stuff. It was more gradual. I decided to start, I didn't like, I wanted to rebrand to Gateway Star. I wanted to be more accessible. That's why I rebranded. That's exactly what I wanted to do is leave the EAS community to become more accessible. And I've been doing stuff with like the more mature audience, like covering the Yandere trope. Not like mature, like, yeah, this is like, like, in some cases it can be like not appropriate for all ages, but it's a very mature topic and it's really mature. So that's basically it. It's, it's like, that's why I've been like tackling a bit more mature subjects with what I with my stories like with the Yandere Pursuit it tackles like with that story compared to like all my last EAS scenario slash audio drama it tackles a very mature subject and I didn't feel like I was ready like what back when I was writing the freezing one I that was before Yandere Pursuit by the way that story I didn't feel ready with my earlier stories when I was in the community to tackle like more mature subjects that I was with my more recent stories I didn't feel like I was ready to tackle a more mature subject. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. But that's but that's fine. I just I was scared to, but now like from criticism and stuff. But now I feel like more comfortable tackling more mature s subjects like mental health and whatnot. And more like horror and branching out has been like amazing. Like I've branched out to the VTubing community and the ASMR audio community. With my reactions, I was able to branch out to both of communities. Because like the ASMR audio community is really connected to the VTuber community. Just look at it. I'll give you one example. Like Tashi.mp3 who like literally who uploaded, you know, the meme, like the bros going through it and the... Uh, the, the one that Asmongold reacted to. That one. That one video got a million views now. And did you know that Tashi is also the VTuber Cinder? If you've heard of Cinder, they're the one and the same. So I'm the point I'm trying to make is that the VTubing community and the ASMR communities are interconnected. And that's basically the point I'm trying to get across. So, like, a lot of the creators I've even reacted to, like, namely, like, Liberty or Sushi or, I'm trying to list all of them. Possibly Mira, who I've, who I've been working with. Like, I'm working on another script for her. She hasn't, like, responded to me yet this time right now, but we'll get into that later. So... There are times, like, I prefer at this point, because of content strategy with a new content strategy, I want to actually make my content good. I want to focus on making it good. That's basically what I want to do. So I'm like, I quite recently am like applying to get monetized. I'm in the process of trying to get monetized. And we'll see how that goes with monetization. I'll see how that goes. For now, like all the funding I get from this channel is from super chats or thanks comments. So I want to really make better content for you guys. I'm doing this to improve the channel. I'm doing this to improve the brand. So I'm really trying to to make my content better and branching out and cutting off the myself from the EAS community is one of the ways, but I still have my EAS friends that I still keep in touch with. I'm willing to talk about it, but I'd rather do the whole EAS stuff off camera. Like I've seen like 
I've watched the Amber Alerts and I've watched like some Corpus tests off camera. It's really nice. It's like a lot more better, better rather than screaming over freaking like weather warnings and stuff. It's better just to look at them off camera. So that goes what I say when there's like severe weather because of like the weather alarms will go off. The storm radios are activate and stuff. I probably won't stream during severe weather or do any of like my streams. The Noah streams, I stopped doing them because a lot of people, I just, it's just, I want to be more accessible. That's the thing. Like I've just left a, t a very toxic community. And a lot of times I've just, I followed suit after like my announcement that I was leaving the community was right after when radio announced it. But I felt like this is right. I'm, I'm glad I left the community. I'm glad I did. She was like the last good person, I will say, within the community. One of the last good people. I haven't spoken to her in a while, but she's chill. So I am going to like, so that's why I left the EAS community. I want, so in summary, it's because of how t the typical, how toxic the community is and really just how like, and just as well as improving content, the, to summarize why I left the EAS community. It's really beyond saving, but who knows? Some people might come in. There might be more good people that come in and fix this community. That's what all I have to say. Thanks for tuning in.